Hello and welcome to another GCSC revision video and in this video we're going to be looking at scaling vectors and the null vector. Now we know a variable that holds just one value is called a scalar. It's called a scalar because it can be used as a scale factor to scale up or down a vector. To scale up or down a vector, just multiply the components by the scalar quantity. For example, 2 multiplied by the vector 1, 2 will give us 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 2 is 4, so it will give us the vector 2, 4. Now we know that when we add vectors, we just attach the tail of a vector to the head of the same vector. Now, if we take a vector and add it to itself, we end up with a vector that's twice as big. So adding a vector to itself is the same as scaling it up by a factor of 2. We can generalize this concept by saying 2 times vector a is equal to vector a plus vector a where a can be any vector. In fact we can even go one further and say that vector a plus itself plus itself plus itself n times is the same as scaling up vector a by a factor of n or we can say it's n times vector a. And this works as well for fractions as it does for integers. For example, we multiplied the vector 1, 2 by 2 in order to get vector 2, 4. But if we'd multiplied vector 2, 4 by a half, we'd get back to vector 1, 2. So we can scale by a factor of a fraction just as easily as we can scale by a factor of a whole number. And in fact, we can do that with negative numbers as well. So negative 1 times vector 1, 2 would be equal to vector negative 1, negative 2. This has the effect of effectively having the arrow being the same magnitude but pointing in the opposite direction. Now here's a neat trick. If it's difficult to subtract vectors, if you don't remember to join the tails together and then draw the arrow from head to head and if it's difficult to remember which head you're drawing the tail from and what the arrow from then one way to clear up the confusion is to take the vector that you're going to subtract and multiply it by the scalar quantity negative one so you've effectively just flipped the vector and then you can just add the vectors like you would normal vector addition that is to say join the tail to the head and, and then that's it job done now if we add negative of a vector to itself we can end up right back at the place where we started because the two vectors are exactly the same length so if we take that vector and then we flip it and then we add it to itself we we're right back to the very same point and we call that the null vector or the zero vector. It has no magnitude. Now we can write it as in component form as zero zero uh, or we could just write it as a bold face zero or we could write it as a zero with an arrow across the top. In fact, any combinations of vectors that are added together and end up at the exact same place where they started will sum to the null vector. OK, well, so much for the theory. Let's have a go at putting this into practice. Can you scale the following vector by a factor of negative 1? Good luck with that. Pause the video. When you're ready for the answer, just press play. OK, so as you can see, the arrow is exactly the same size, but pointing in the opposite direction. 
and in component form if we multiply negative 1 by a vector 3, 4 then we'll get negative 3, negative 4. OK, how did you get on with that last question? Alright, let's try another one. Can you scale the following vector by a factor of negative 3? OK, take your time, pause the video. When you're ready for the answer, just press play. OK, how did you get on with that one? So if we're multiplying a vector by negative 3, the arrow will be three times the size, but pointing in the opposite direction. And in component form, we could say that negative 3 times vector 4, 4, is equal to negative 12, negative 12. OK, last question. What happens if we multiply 0 by this vector? OK, take your time, pause the video. When you're ready for the answer, just press play. OK, now this is the kind of question that could catch people out, especially if you're used to the rule that anything times 0 is 0. Well, that's not strictly speaking true. If we multiply the scalar 0 by any vector, then we're going to get the null vector. So you can't just write 0. You would have to write it in boldface or draw an arrow over the top of it to indicate that it's a vector. So the scalar quantity 0 multiplied by any vector is going to be the null vector, not the scalar 0. So it still remains a vector even though it's multiplied by 0. Or in component form, you could just write it as 0, 0. OK, I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you're taking your GCSEs this year, I'd like to wish you every success with your revision and every success with your exams. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video.